that. Warren Ingram in studio with us this evening, personal financial advisor, executive director at Galileo Capital. I was relaying the idea of choosing a unit trust as being considerably harder than picking from a menu because there are a thousand of these things roughly in South Africa. And then add sort of whatever the number is, 75,000 internationally, which we can buy as well. And it becomes much, much more difficult than cho- choosing a meal off the menu. Okay. So how then do we choose a unit trust with any degree of certainty? Not only is it about the company, it's about the people who manage it, the fund manager. It's about the investment style. It's about the geography. It's about the risk profile. It's about too many things for my poor brain to comprehend. I think you start with the let's let's view a unit trust as a tool, and so um, it's a tool that can. There, there are lots of tools uh, or types of tools in the in the unit trust sort of toolbox, and and so just the, the start of starting point is what is the problem that you want to solve? What is it that you want this unit trust to do for you? So, for example, if you're saving up to put a, a deposit down on a re- replacement of your car or a new car in two or three years' time, then the answer is you can look at a range of unit trusts like money market funds and fixed income funds, something like that. Whereas if you're saving for your one-month-old baby's potential wedding in 25 years, then you can look at something that invests in shares. So those would be called equity unit trusts because your time frame is so long. Uh, whereas if you've got a time frame that's sort of three or four or five years, then you're probably looking at a more conservative, you know, what, that's something that they're usually called moderate or stable kind of funds. Balanced funds. Th- then five oh. to ten years, you would say balanced funds. Okay. So, so I think it's um, it's a starting point to say, well, actually, just just the, to me, you can cut out a lot large part of the of the of the unit trust universe by just deciding on what is the job that you want how long do you need to invest the money for and what sort of risk are you prepared to take and, and then i mean your favorite thing is what is it going to cost you because it's pointless spending a lot of money on a unit trust that doesn't deliver a great return and is costing you a large chunk of that return in order to yeah. pay the fund manager to mismanage it for it, you. This is what irritates the fund managers most. This this exact point. Uh, we, you know, when 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 I talk about this, I get abusive emails tonight and tomorrow. And and but it's a fair. But thing. as you have no friends, that's the only communication <laughs> you get. I just won't look at my emails for a few days. <laughs> so. To, to understand um, cost, it's it's a bit like um, you know mar- running a marathon with a backpack full of rocks. If you and I are, are equally fit and my backpack's got a lot more rocks um, in it than yours, you're going to beat me over the marathon. And that's what costs are. So, so the more costs you've got to carry, the more uh, the, the, the fund has got to perform to be able to deliver a return. And so, and so it's no surprise. And some fund managers do outperform other fund managers more often than others yeah. and charge higher costs. You just don't know which ones they are because not all fund managers outperform other fund managers consistently in perpetuity. Yeah, that's the trick. So, so it's no surprise that, that the lower cost funds often end up at least in the top half of their respective category, whatever they're in, and very, very often in the top half of the top half, so the top 25%. So, so to me, I would, I would start with if there's an order here, what's the job that this fund needs to do for me? Second is what are the costs? Uh, I would generally exclude the most expensive funds. I'm not saying that you that you definitely exclude them, but it would be a big factor against them. They would have to do a lot of other things right for me to consider a, a most expensive fund. And one of the great mysteries, and maybe this is a topic all on its own, is to figure out actually what it's costing you. Because the total expense ratio is not the total expense of the fund. It's part of the cost. There's a broker cost. There is an advice cost. There is a, a fund management cost. And you can then also, in some of these things, get performance a performance fees. fee, which is the great sort of lurking un- unknown in many of these yeah. things. And, and so what has happened, fortunately, more recently, is that uh, fund managers have been forced to, to disclose what's called a total investment charge. You'll, if you see it on, on, a, on the information sheet of a unit trust, it's, it's often uh, abbreviated to TI. I see total investment charge, and and you're right. It won't uh, disclose your financial advisor fee, but uh, it will disclose the the fund manager cost, the the um, performance fees if there are any, and then the the actual transaction costs within within the fund. So the, the I must look out for that. T I C. And if it's not there. <laughs> it, it, it has to be there. Okay. It has to be there. If that's not there, then, then, then they're in trouble. Okay. Index or active? We've talked to- about this many, many times before. So- Performance. I There's a guy who's brilliant. Okay. Guys, he, yeah, the last two years, he's been great. He's got, done twice as well as everybody else. His fund has got to be the best fund. And his fund. Or her fund. Yeah. Their fund. That fund. That, that top performing fund in South Africa attracts the most money. 
time after time after time. Uh, but we just need to understand that the top performer is uh, often ends up right at the bottom of the pile in, in, in a very short space of time after it hit number one. And the, the best example I can find has happened most recently, and that's in the property sector, in the, in the South African property market. There was a fund that was number one a year ago. If we'd looked at the unit trust rankings in the property sector, we would have said there is one fund there that is number one over one month, three months, six months, one year. I think it was the only time it wasn't number one would have been over three years or five years. Over 10 years, it was number one. If you look at that fund in the Which one was it? I don't, do, we, do we need to slash Yes, it? you do. Oh, okay, shame. It's the Absa Property Fund. Okay, okay no, it's just interesting. I mean, because I, I, I haven't looked at it in detail. And, and suddenly it's come unstuck because the strategy that it was using then suddenly didn't work. They, they had a lot of exposure to the resilient group of, of companies. And so, and so now, if you look at the most recent monthly performance rankings and you go back to uh, look at the last year's performance, that fund is stone last in its category, yeah. 41 out of 41. It's lost investors 9% for the last 12 months. Then you look at the fund that's currently number one, and it's now it's made eleven percent for for the year. And I, I went back and looked at what happened to that fund a year ago, and it was in the top ten. And and so that that leads to point number two around performance. I'm I'm not saying that you avoid funds that are in the top uh, top half of the of their rankings or at leakings or at least in the top twenty five percent of their rankings, but uh, but I'm I'm always going to be wary of the fund that's number one. Uh, b- because to me, that's where that's where this can this can happen. Yeah, well, you have a great strategy that works now. I mean, if you were in a fund that had a, a big stake in Nasbat, you did well for a long period of time, uh, and that you kept that big stake in Nasbat, and Nasbat has come back twenty five percent. You have felt the pain of that in your fund. You can't compete. You, you no. just you can't, and, and that is a great point. It, 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 and okay, so consistency is absolutely critical, and you don't have to be the top dog to to. Outperform the average of the market over time is your point. Um, we need to talk about focus. I mean, that's an that's an important one. So, so I'm always wary of of investing in a unit trust that's run by a generic product provider. And what I mean by that is, does this company offer insurance? Does it offer banking? Does it happen to offer unit trusts as well? Is it sort of a tag on because you know we need to offer the whole range? If that's the case, I'm, I'm, that fund really needs to work hard in my mind before I'm going to choose it. There are some companies, uh, you know, some of the very big generic product providers that have realized they can't employ fund managers and retain them. So what they do is they say, we're going to offer our range of funds, but we're happy to, to outsource the management to specialists. That I like. That that works for me. Mm-hmm. That's focus. And, and again, um, size and age matter. Um, size in particular. You, you want your fund manager to be quite nimble. You do, but I think uh, – so I'm actually going the other way in this one, oh. Bruce. I, I, I think in South Africa what has happened is that the bigger managers have learned how to manage the costs of running a fund. In other words, transaction costs and the like. So, so a new fund that started with a new company a month ago, I'm going to watch them for at least three years before I really start uh, committing money to them. So, so I need them to go through some kind of a market cycle. I, I, would, I want to see them kind of drop the ball every now and then and see how they recover before, before I give them uh, money. Warren Ingram, thank you very much indeed. How best to choose a unit trust? Um, have another listen to it. Share the podcast. The podcast goes out every evening from about 10, quarter past eight or thereabouts. You'll find that podcast wherever you find your podcasts, usually.